<clears throat> All right, so how's it going? Where are, you, uh, where are you headed to now? I just landed awesome. in Nashville. You, I'm in Nashville right uh, now. I'm in Nashville right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard getting a little work there. That's good. I'm excited to to see what comes out yes, of it. Sir. Nashville, I mean, it's a huge music city. Um, you know, and a lot of people think of it about country music, but really Nashville has has a ton of music outside of just the the massive country influence there. It does. Um, awesome. So um, I want to jump right into to, to your music and, and you being, you know, a veteran of strange music now for a while. Um Working with younger artists like mm-hmm. JL when you guys did Contraband, um, working with newer artists that come in, working with Joey Cool, these guys, do you see that, uh, you know, you have you have a label that really, you guys do a lot of collaborations, whether it's, you know, text full collab albums or just within the label itself doing a lot of collaborations. Do you guys get really heavily competitive on tracks mm-hmm. or is it more of just like a, you know, I just thought this song would sound cool with this artist, so I went to them. I think that we all push each other to, to be great. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when, like, I get JL or Joey Cool, I know they're going to bring it. Or I get Tech on or Calico, I know they're going to bring it. So that's going to push me to write as well. So it's just like we just push each other to be great. You know what I'm saying? We all want to be great. Absolutely. And, and, that's, uh, and I think it's, it's a really cool thing about the label is that when you have so many artists that are so talented in those genres, you, like, I hear a lot of people always say like, "Oh, I, I have to bring this crazy thing to tech because tech is crazy." So like, I have to, I have to match that. So when it's everybody, I think yeah. that's why the label to me has been so successful throughout the years is because you guys all, you know, you're like, "Well, I, I, if I'm jumping on this guy's track, like I know he's gonna bring it, so I gotta bring it." <laughs> well, not not only just even that, it's just like in general. Uh, Everybody takes pride in their pen, and they, we pride ourselves in getting better and better every single time. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, it's kind of it's still cutting in and out a little bit here, but uh, but I I honestly like everybody's got to have uh, you know everybody takes pride in what they're what they're Hello? doing. So. All right, I think we got you again here. Did you, did you hear, did you hear, did you hear? Okay, I was saying that, uh, I don't know if you heard me, but I'll repeat it. I said everybody definitely takes pride in it. And not only necessarily with, when we have each other on each other's records, but just taking pride on getting better and being great. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're only as good as your last record. You know what I'm saying? After every ladder is the loudest, that means you got to continue to keep climbing and keep pushing yourself to get better. So you got to exercise. And then it definitely helps when you have, as many geniuses and talented artists on strange as they got, there's like real super talent over there. So you know what I mean? Uh, there's a deep respect. Everybody really respects each other. We're fans of each other, and uh, everybody wants to be, wants to be great. So we root for each Absolutely. other. Absolutely, and, and, and other. it is. It's, it's you know one of the mean? things I really like about um, about strange. And with everybody that I've talked to this week, um, you see that camaraderie you see the friendships but you also see the 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 pushing one another and and uh and i don't want to say like trying to be better than one another but trying to continue to be as good as you can be um, around these people um so the the next thing i want to get into is just talking Definitely. a little bit about black lion um and the the, the three prong style that mm-hmm. strange is going with now um do you see is is it still a similar style of creating uh, for you when it comes to the albums, or are you still okay? Definitely, definitely, definitely still similar style. So only thing that's really changed now is how they're dropping it, which I kind of like it uh, because of the consistency of material. Before we would do a full album. And then it drops, and then there's a, a, a long period of time off. This right now, it keeps us being consistent and in keeping content out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, but still, in my process of creating an album, I try to create a roller coaster ride. You dig know what I'm saying? So it's like all a bunch of emotions into one. And that's what it is. You dig know what I'm saying? So 
I was actually even on this album a able to break it down even a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Because I understood what I want to lead out with the first four, what I want to come out with the second four, what I want to come out with the third four, and then how I want it to be on the full album. Now, things happen. So there was like a couple of records that I did want to come out prior to. Right. It didn't come out. You know what I'm saying? But things happen. You know what I'm saying? But it's still going to be on the album. You know what I'm saying? And then even when the album comes up, there's a whole different sequencing and everything. So it's going to still feel like a new album. So the song, the 12 songs that you've heard, it's just going to blend in. When you still hear a black line, it's still going to feel like a fresh new album. You dig what I'm saying? Because there's like nine records, ten records that you haven't heard yet. You dig what I'm saying? And um, I like to say I saved the best for last. So if you like the first three segments, that you're really going to feel this because... We got yeah, some absolutely, and, and it's you it's know? interesting because you know you you talked about how you like to to bring all of those um, all the elements you, your roller coaster ride, um, but you can also see that you know in certain times yeah. you're trying to elevate uh, you know certain albums are trying to elevate a different thing like Malta Ben felt more like a personal album uh, versus like Level Up, which was while there was still was. differences in it, there was a lot more you know banger tracks on it. You got a lot more. You know, high energy tracks on something like Level Up. Um, Malta Ben was, was was my therapy, though. You know what I'm saying? Music is our therapy as well. And Malta Ben was definitely therapy for me because I went back and started understanding where I come from and my, my history and my ancestors and, and everything what my family had to endure. And uh, I had to give that, you know what I'm saying? So that was me also finding myself as well and giving the fans me and what it is you dig what i'm saying so i definitely that was my most personal album that i've ever done walter ben and it's one of my favorites because it's you know what i'm saying there's a lot of things that's personal um but it's a deep record you know what i'm saying i think that the fans wasn't necessarily used to that they they, they were used to me doing certain records that are deep but just to go all the way there um it was a little bit different Level up, it was just like I was, it was a whole different mood, you know what I'm saying? So, Malta Ben, I'm up here, my own therapy, you dig what I'm saying? It just happened to be, I'm creating an album during this time, you dig what I'm saying? So, we write, invent what it is, you dig what I'm saying? When I say it's our therapy, it's our therapy, you feel me? Sometimes you got to get it out and it takes a load of bricks off your shoulder, so... That was what that was, and Level Up, I was just having fun. I was back there having fun. You know, Malta Ben was super serious. Level Up, I was like, okay, it's time to go to another level. Let's have yeah, fun. Yeah, and I like, I like and that, that you're, you're able to, like you say, I mean, a lot of albums and what a lot of people were used to were you bringing in some, some meaning into a track or two or, or, you know, meaning that, I don't want to say just a track or two, but bringing meaning to these songs that were still energy, upbeat songs. Um but I mean, Walta Ben was one of my favorites from you personally as well. It's just it's um, because of that same side where you're where you're able to peek behind some of the the rest of the artist, which is really why I do what I do. Is always been since I was young. I've loved music, but I've also loved you know. I was I was yesterday talking to Mayday. I was telling him about how I would buy albums that specifically had like tour footage from it or specifically had like behind the scenes type of stuff. Uh, hang on a second here. Yeah, I, I got audio here, but I don't have a uh, video for a second here. Okay. Okay. I, I um, see you and I can hear you. Well it loads up here. But yeah, so I was just I was just saying, you know, I've always been interested in not just the the music side of it, but I always wanted to buy the albums that came with like a tour DVD or that came with, uh, you know, uh, um, behind the scenes footage of stuff. It was always something that, right. Content, more content. Yeah. So, and that, you know, that, that brings you closer into the artist and closer into the project and everything too. That's super dope. I don't think it happens enough. I think we need to do more of that. And I would say stay tuned for what's going to happen because my mind is definitely there on, documenting the process of creating and for people to really see what it takes to do that some people think it's super easy and, and everything to do it but you really have to go lock in and get lost in your music you know what i'm saying 
really lost where nothing else matters. You know what I'm saying? Nothing around you really matters. You know what I'm saying? You have to focus and you have to get in and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Become one with the music. Become right. one and with it, your and ideas. It's hard, and it is hard to, to, you know, and this is one of the things that we were talking about with, with Mayday was that it's hard to make that authentic and when you're when you're trying to do your music, but you're also, um, you know, having somebody film and they might say like, oh, we missed that section. Can you go back and do it again? It just feels uh, somewhat uh, like forced at times. So. I would do it a different way. I would, I would be doing it a different way. If there's somebody documenting a the joint, they'll fly on the wall and they just taking what, what what's going up in there. No interruptions. Just be the fly on the wall and capture the magic when it's going to happen. You don't never know when it's going to happen. There's going to be a magic hour. There's going to be times where things click. Just be that fly on the wall. Keep the cameras going. You'll, you'll, you'll get it. You know what I'm saying? I think in a situation like that, you have a direction, but you don't have no real direction because you can't pinpoint what the music is going to do and what the vibe and the music God's going to do to you. So you got to just let it, let it happen organically, organically. And then that's when the magic happens. When you just, you don't think about it. You just go in with with the open mind, creativity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My bad. I mean, I had just got done landing uh, here in Nashville. You know what I'm saying? So I apologize. I'm in the car right now, but uh, we still getting it on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, so what I want to do now is uh, is kind of jump into the heart of what this interview series has been, um, Quarantine Questions, which is where we ask um, the artists just some some questions about life in quarantine. Um, we directed these a little bit more towards strange music. Uh, so we set up a new list of these uh, for you guys. And uh, so the first one we have for you is who on your label do you think that would be the first or the would be the person to survive an, ap- an apocalypse? Uh, Godimus. <laughs> so, and, and it's funny you say that. That's the that's three out of the four went with Godimus. Yeah. Um, and, and God, God, your... Godimus is a la carte. He's gonna live forever, man. He's gonna live it, forever. That's my God. That's my brother. Big shout out to Godimus and Seth's crew, UBI as well. He, that's that's a la carte. He, yeah, he, 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 that's the man right there, man. <laughs> And that's, yeah. that was my, personally, what I thought about this question, that's that's who I had in mind. Uh, you know, having met him a handful of times, he, he seems like he's he's going to survive. Like, yeah. it, it's going to happen, he's going to push through it, and it's going to be God, there. Godness is going to live forever. <laughs> he's going to live forever. That's a la carte, man, I'm telling you. Yes. Fantastic. Well, um, so we'll jump into the, the second question here, is uh, who... Who's one artist that you've been listening to the most during quarantine? I finished my album during quarantine, so I haven't been listening to no artists. I've been <laughs> I've been listening to Stevie Stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like when I'm creating an album, I don't listen to a lot of music, you know what I'm saying? Um So during the quarantine I finished the album, so I wasn't listening to anything. Sure, sure. I mean that's fair enough. That's I mean, and especially do you so do you find yourself not listening to other artists because you don't want that to like influence your, your right. what you're trying to do? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, w- I want to, because you know, you can get that subconsciously. You dig what I'm saying? Just by hearing something that subconsciously goes, and you know what I'm saying? Especially when creating the album, I just want to go fresh and instinctively, whatever feels good. You dig what I'm saying? So it's like, my inspirations will be from other things, not music. Yeah. To inspire yeah. me to do the music. It's gonna come from other places, not music to inspire me. And then I just, you know, I just wanna be me on my record, so I don't listen to a lot of music, especially when I'm recording and uh producing an album. Yeah, I and I agree with that. I, I've had that conversation with people asking because like I mean I'm I'm a big fan of like Nardwar. Um in in terms of interviews and but I try not to watch a lot of interview stuff because I I feel like I'm going to start pulling from people and I'm going to start asking questions that have been asked before. I'm going to start, you know, having little things that I, I, that I don't even think about because I do it naturally. I just try to like, I'll start imitating people when I'm, when I'm talking to them for long enough, I'll start to notice myself like catching myself doing little things. So then it'll happen subconsciously. You know what I'm saying? You don't even realize that it's happening, but it do. So, yeah. Okay. So here's a, here's the one that some people have struggled a little bit with. 
who is the artist that you think is going to come out with the best beach body and the best dad body? Beach body? Um, beach body. Joey Cool. <laughs> Joey Cool, okay. And you said, what's the other one? Uh, the best dad bod. Who's coming out? Who's what's coming that? out looking like looking what's like that? a dad? You know, a little a little extra weight on him. You know, maybe uh, Chris Chris Calico. <laughs> yeah, Chris. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. Um, perfect. So so going into the next question here, uh, who or you know, with with all the stress of the world lately, I mean not only with everything that's happened in the last couple of weeks here, but COVID before it, you know, it's, it's a big election year. Just a lot of people are going under a lot of different stresses right now. Right. And what's, what's something that you've been able to count on to help decompress and recharge? Focused, focused on what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, COVID was good for me because I was able to sit down and focus and, and lock myself in. So, my experience from COVID could be different than a lot of other people's, but I got a lot of work done and a lot of future work done. You dig what I'm saying? So I just locked in, got focused. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, absolutely. That's It's it's one of those things that, uh, you know, when you can, I, and I've heard this from a lot of different sources, but, you know, if you're, if you're able to put even just one task together over and over again and then you start building upon that, like, a lot of military people talk about making your bed every morning. Like, if you just make your bed every morning, that one task is going to start to stone. And then all of a sudden, okay, well, now I, I, can, I already make my bed. Let me work out for five minutes every morning. Like, yeah. and, and it keeps going. So that focus definitely, definitely helps um, keep yeah. your mind off of other stuff, too. Definitely. And just able to, like, you know what I'm saying, pinpoint things down and just block out. I mean, we couldn't go nowhere. I wasn't trying to go nowhere anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the joint. So it was just like... It was just per perfect for me, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. I think it was much needed for me, you dig what I'm saying? Because we be on the go so much. So even the months that we up set, even though it sucks that I ain't been able to do no shows, and I love doing shows, I can't wait to get back on the road and do shows. It was time, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was able to get all my thoughts and everything together and complete the album and set some things up for the future and everything like that. So it was it was great for me. Absolutely. Um, so the, the last question I have for you here, um, you know, these these types of massive events, they often cause a lot of things to just go haywire, whether it was, you know, people now realizing what social distancing is, people realizing, you know, I got to wash my hands a lot more. Like you talking, talking, talking about, you talking about all, all, all the shit that we supposed to be doing anyway. Right, right. And a lot okay. of people just are, are, are waking up to that and realizing yeah. like, Man, I really like. I, there's certain things that, like, you think about how much your phone touches in a day. You think about all the things you touch in a day that maybe you didn't see before. So, what's one thing that you hope it, that that has changed during all this that sticks? And what's one thing that you can't wait to go back to from before? I don't think that. Um, I think that after this, everything's going to be different. I don't think that every, anything that we've done been through before is going to be the same afterwards. I think that there's going to be a lot of different changes. I have a lot of different thoughts, and I think that's a whole different discussion. You know what I'm saying? Um, to really dive in on that. Um, what's the last thing you asked? I'm, I'm going to answer this question uh, best of my ability. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, and what's what's one thing like from before that you can't wait to like re-enter society? You can't wait to get back to doing. Shows. shows touching yeah. touching the people being in front of the people um with me the people are everything the fans are everything it's like a volleyball match full of energy um i serve the ball they hit it back i serve the ball they hit it back you know what i'm saying so i just miss that i miss the fans i miss meeting and greeting i miss touching the people and i miss performing you know what i'm saying that's one thing that i love to do is hit the stage music is really my remedy when i hit the stage so i really miss that you know what i'm saying so that's the one thing that I miss out of all this, being on, the, being on the shows, being on the stage, performing for the fans, meeting, greeting the fans, meeting the fans and all of that. Absolutely, man. And, and we're excited to have you back. I mean, I, I know that's a big part 
a lot of a lot of people missing live music not only artists but fans and everybody in between it's 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 really uh something that i can't wait to come back to the book. i will so. say i will say this i got something brewing right now i will say this on here um i'm gonna do a show it may be a pay-per-view show or something like that where we you know what i'm saying very very cheap and you know what i'm saying there's something in the works i'm not gonna be up it ain't gonna be too much longer. I'm in the works on something, so stay tuned. Stay right, tuned. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be stay tuned for that. I'm I'm excited, and I've seen a lot of creative ways of people that are talking about doing like shows in cars. Um, there was something down in I think it was down in Texas at the University or the Houston Stadium, where they were gonna have like 400 cars pull in there for some massive show, and everybody can turn their dial to like to hear the show and then just watch it like that. So. It's it's interesting seeing what people are coming up with, and I'm excited to see what uh, what you got brewing too. Got got to be creative, you know. So I've been talking with some people, got like a, a little bit of plan. So we're working on some things. It's not uh, just stay tuned. I'll say just stay tuned. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, very the very in a, in a very soon future. Stay tuned. Like you may you may hear <laughs> something. Coming. You may hear something any day now. Awesome. Well, I'll I'll be I'll be watching for it, man. Yes, sir. Um, so the last thing I want to do here is just kind of open it up to you to tell everybody, you know, what, aside from this, you have coming up in the near future, um, promote any merch, anything that's going on in your world right now that you want to talk about. Uh, it's, it's just open to you. I would say this July 10th, I have my album black line coming out. Um, definitely be on the lookout for that. I definitely think it's some of my best work that I've done. Uh, people who have heard it have told me like, yo, this is some of your best work that you've done. You dig what I'm saying? So I'm excited about that. Um, and there's a lot of things that's going on. I don't want to let too many no no cats out the back. I'll just say stay tuned. Stay stay tuned to more content. Stay tuned to me more on social media. Um, be ready for the announcements that's about to happen. Black Line, July 10th. Stevie Stone, Strange Music. You know what it is. Absolutely, man. Hey, I want to thank you again for tuning in with us. Um, for for you know, I know you're you're a busy man. You're dropping down in Nashville right now, so we appreciate you uh, jumping on the jumping on the call here and uh, and checking in with us. I appreciate you, my G. Love. Have a good one. And me.